Bond, James Bond, <laughs> Secret Agent 007, with a license to kill, preferred attire, black tuxedo, drink of choice, dry martini, shaken, not stirred, first film, Dr. No, 1962. In 1962, I happened to be a baby. My jacket, white with no collar, my bow tie, red, clip on. My drink of choice, milk in a sippy cup. I have a license to drool. So at first, really, it's all about the Aston Martin. That's, that's it. In 1965, Corgi sold three million of these to boys just like me. This car had a working ejector seat, bulletproof shield, pop out machine guns. This is a car that shoots people. What could be cooler? So my parents take me to see Thunderball. Now, not only does it have the Aston Martin, this movie has jetpacks, scuba divers, spear guns, sharks, everything a little boy dreaming of adventure could possibly want. So naturally, I cannot wait to see the next movie, You Only Live Twice. I hear this one has volcanoes, a cool Toyota getaway car, everyone's talking about it, and my parents won't take me to see it. I'm hostage in the back seat of our Chevy Impala as they drive right past the theater. I hate my parents. It doesn't matter. I'm getting a little older now. I'm a big boy. I'm, I got the double-breasted blazer, late 60s thing happening. And I'm starting to notice other things. Other things like pussy galore. I think I know what that means. Yeah. So the next time I see James Bond, my father takes the whole family. But I am sitting next to my grandmother, who's a minister, <laughs> while Sean Connery is shagging Jill St. John under a fur bedspread. I mean, I'm 13 years old. This is nothing but awkward. <laughs> so, so it seems no matter who plays James Bond, all he has to do is look at a girl to get her into bed. And I am discovering that in real life, this does not always work. When a girl actually likes me, my reaction is a mixture of amazement and cold fear. Okay? <laughs> Roger Moore is playing James Bond like a game show host, and these movies are starting really to lose interest for me because I am becoming a hippie. Here I am holding my hippie friend's baby on a road trip to Stonerville. <laughs> James Bond, not cool, man. Not cool. Oh wait, yes he is, yes he is, the spy who loves me brings everybody back. The submarine Lotus is cool enough for the little boy in me. The Bond girl, Barbara Bach, is hot enough for the teen in me. I'm driving my own car to the drive-in. Boom. <laughs> Octopussy. I do not know what this means. I don't. I don't know what it means. I do know this. The movies are getting kind of silly, and Roger Moore is getting too old for this shit. And so am I. So am I. I need something real. And just about that time, I meet this girl. She's real. Rebecca Celebrezzi. Yes. And shortly after meeting her, I have a really good idea. James Bond got married in one of the movies, but it did not work out well for him. Was I luckier than him? Considerably. Soon there's a baby. Her drink of choice, milk. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Bond movies, Roger Moore is starting to sag like an old satchel. I take Rebecca. <laughs> she actually yells out rude things at the screen about his lack of sex appeal right in the theater. It's <laughs> my girl. Well, the Bond movies get more serious, and so do I. I get a corporate job and I start traveling on the company jet, where I have the best moment of my entire life so far when the stewardess asked me if I would like my usual cocktail at 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> I'm on fire, baby. My career is hot. It's burning up. Like many men in their 40s, I'm starting to define myself by things outside of myself, things like clothing and accessories and job title and status how to order a martini, Pierce Brosnan does it wrong, what a douche. 
Yeah, I think I'm pretty hot right about now. And here I am, here I am with Rebecca at the very top of the World Trade Center in downtown Manhattan. We're celebrating New Year's Eve of the year 2000 as it turns into 2001. See, the problem with basing your identity on things outside of yourself is they can disappear out from under you in a day. Downtown Manhattan is a cold and lonely place in the weeks after 9-11, and the first time I feel like a human being again is when I see Halle Berry <laughs> wading out of the Cuban surf, and every man in the theater groans in unison. <laughs> Women have the same reaction when <laughs> Daniel Craig takes over. This is the first Bond movie that Rebecca actually likes. <laughs> not, not, not for the reason you think. It's because this James Bond is a human being. He's battered, he's vulnerable, he's human. See, here's the thing. You don't have to become some perfect fantasy figure of a man. What you have to do is learn how to take your lumps and still keep a spirit of adventure. This is me, a couple of years ago, sand surfing the giant sand dunes of Peru. And that little boy I showed you at the beginning who was dreaming of adventure, I took that little boy with me. In Skyfall, somebody asks James Bond, what's your hobby? And he answers, resurrection. And what he means is that no matter what happens, he's going to keep on being in there. He's going to keep on trying. And that's what I love about this guy. He always comes back. And they say it at the end of every Bond movie, don't they? James Bond will return. <laughs>